Last summer, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene hired right-wing provocateur Milo Yiannopoulos as an unpaid intern. And before that, she posted this photograph of the two of them on Truth Social with the caption, They cancel us because they fear the truth, in all caps. Now, when it comes to Milo... He wasn't canceled because he's some truth teller who is just telling us the hard truths that none of us can digest. He was canceled, including by right wingers, because he was an open advocate for legalizing pedophilia. And as Brian Tyler Cohen put it, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is accusing Democrats of child grooming, has hired far right Milo Yiannopoulos as an intern. Yiannopoulos has advocated for legalizing sex between 13 year olds and adults because he says 13 year olds are not children and are, quote, sexually mature. Absolutely nauseating. And let's not forget that Greene also called Democrats the party of pedophiles recently in an interview with Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes. But yet, she hired someone who is a-okay with pedophilia. This is someone who thinks that unrepented homosexuals like Dave Rubin should be executed, while pedophiles should be allowed to legally engage in intercourse with minors. This man is sick, but yet she hired him. The anti-groomer lady. Make it make sense. But it's not just the hypocrisy here that makes that photo particularly funny. It's the fact that Marjorie Taylor Greene decided to get in bed with someone who would one day royally fuck her over. And I guess she's never heard of the fable, the scorpion and the frog. But um, she might want to familiarize herself with that. And maybe she's doing that now because here's what happened between her and Milo Yiannopoulos. As LGBTQ Nation explains, the Daily Beast reported that a charge on a card in the name of Isaiah Wartman, this is the consultant who works for Green, by the way, was used to make a $7,020.16 payment to GoDaddy to buy the domain name on November 22nd, 2022, the same day that Yiannopoulos orchestrated a dinner at Mar-a-Lago with Donald Trump and white supremacist Nick Fuentes. A receipt for the transaction shows Yiannopoulos' cell phone number. Green's FEC filing show that Wartman was reimbursed for the expense. That same day, the Kanye 2020 campaign reimbursed Yiannopoulos for a domain transfer in the amount of 9955 The increased price from what Green's campaign was billed for could be another domain name. Kanye's 2020 treasurer, Patrick Grayson, later resigned and raised concerns about campaign finance violations by Yiannopoulos in his resignation letter including, quote, an expense for a digital asset where Yiannopoulos allegedly sought reimbursements from both Kanye 2020 and the campaign of Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, according to Politico. Grayson said that that transaction occurred in November of 2022. If Greene's campaign gave over $7,000 to West's, that would violate campaign finance rules since it's over the maximum donation allowed, which is $2,000 per year. So there's a plethora of issues here. First and foremost, it seems as if Milo Yiannopoulos allegedly falsified campaign reports. He took campaign funds and didn't tell them what it was being used for. On top of that, if Marjorie's campaign filed these reports, then they are now potentially culpable for giving the government incorrect information. It's a huge clusterfuck that Milo Yiannopoulos unleashed on Marjorie Taylor Greene's campaign. But uh, what was it that she said about Milo? Can we put up the tweet again? Oh, that's right. They cancel us because they fear the truth. Mm. Turns out that uh, Milo Yiannopoulos in particular was canceled, including by fellow Republicans, because not only does he have disgusting views, but he's also somebody who can't be trusted. He is a notorious troll and you hired him, Marjorie. And now as a result, you may be in legal trouble. I think it probably depends on how much she knew, although I'm not a lawyer, I can confirm that. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, their campaign, their her office is responding, rather, by basically saying, we had no idea. Congresswoman Green knew nothing about the gross negligence made by a vendor and is being unfairly attacked as a result, a consultant for Green's campaign, Isaiah Wartman, said in a statement. The campaign was told the purchase was refunded. This wasn't the case. Now, Ross Story adds, according to Rolling Stone's Tim Dickinson, Green immediately distanced herself from Yiannopoulos to avoid blowback since there are rules that dictate limits on how much one campaign can donate to another. So basically, Milo Yiannopoulos took this money, told them that it was refunded when he, in fact, did not refund it, according to Marjorie Taylor Greene. So, in other words, he took the money from them, spent it, got the money from Kanye West, about $10,000, and then didn't give it back to them. So the question is, did he keep the money? 
Because if that's the case, then that means that he technically stole from two campaigns, Marjorie Greene's campaign and Kanye West's campaign. Wow. I... <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I find this funny. I find this hilarious. It's not like donating $7,000 to another campaign is something that we never see. It happens. Lots of members of Congress do this. They donate to their peers. They fundraise and they give it to uh, PACs, though. But that's the difference. Because of Citizens United, you can only donate unlimited sums of money to a campaign through a super PAC. But if you give it uh, to them directly, that is tantamount to a campaign finance violation. And if the money wasn't refunded, then that was basically a donation from Marjorie Taylor Greene to Kanye West, which is illegal. So I'm not necessarily sure how legally culpable her campaign is going to be held. It seems like they could probably use Milo as the scapegoat because... I mean, he's the one responsible for all of this. But I mean, I hope that the stink rubs off on Marjorie Green and she gets into trouble as well because it just kind of proves that you shouldn't trust people like this. But she did, right? And now she's distancing herself from Milo Yiannopoulos, which tells us that, you know, she was fine with his pro-pedophilia comments, but she draws the line at campaign finance violations because she is someone who respects the law. It's just hilarious. She trusted Milo, and she's now learning that that was not a very smart decision. <laughs> very good judgment, Marjorie. See, here's the thing. These fascists have absolutely no morals, and they don't care about the suffering that they inflict on others, including allies. And they're willing to fuck over their own friends like that if they can benefit from it personally. But Milo doesn't care because Marjorie Taylor Greene's usefulness to him is apparently done because Kanye West decided to hire him back as director of political operations. Because, yes, Kanye West is still planning to run for president in 2024. And Milo's very first order of business was fucking over more of his former friends by firing fascists like Ali Alexander and Nick Fuentes. Now, I've got to say that Milo is playing a very dangerous game here because a video surfaced of Nick Fuentes getting into a physical altercation at CPAC. And I believe this happened a couple of months ago, but we're only seeing it now. And let me tell you, when you see this video, you're going to learn that Nick Fuentes, the booger-eating Nazi in question here, is not someone that you want to mess with. We need to stop. We need to stop. Hey. <laughs> Don't fucking hey. Don't fucking touch him. Stop. Just... Yeah, we will. Sure. Just fucking stop. You just walk away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my favorite part was the kick. It reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite's brother. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, like, when when Nick Fuentes went in, like, we didn't get to see his fist. Like, was it, like, open hand? Was he trying to scratch his face? <laughs> and I'm also imagining Nick Fuentes trying to retaliate back by kicking him, only to fly off that gigantic fucking size 25 <laughs> boot that he was wearing. <laughs> I have to watch one more time. I'm sorry. I'm not over it yet. One more time. We need to stop. We need to stop. Don't hey, fucking hey, don't fucking touch him. Stop. Just, yeah, sure. Just, the kick. The kick is just. The kick. <laughs> oh, and they were like holding each other's hands. Folks, I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to even say. These people are all fucking clowns. But getting back to the story at hand, I mean, what else can you say about this? If you play with fire, you're going to get burned. But the problem is that this is a lesson that Marjorie Taylor Greene is incapable of learning considering the fact that the remaining two brain cells in her skull are working overtime as it is to keep her from forgetting to breathe and spontaneously suffocating. So I don't necessarily expect her to learn from this and grow and stop associating with terrible people like Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos only to learn that that was a bad decision. I expect her to continue to get in bed with the most egregious figures because she herself is an egregious figure. But when you have no morals, don't expect loyalty from these folks. So, I mean, we shouldn't expect her to uh, start to do better, but at least we can sit back and bask in the schadenfreude because, holy shit, is this really, really wonderful to watch.
I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. 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 Come.